Adeneko and welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God. All powered by the Pastor Lan Adeneko Center for Inspiration, the place. <music> This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gem son upon the crown of Jesus Christ. By shining truth this morning on, you are as strong as your unattended weakness. They are coming from Luke chapter 22, 1 through 6. Let's pray together and then right after we are into it. Our Father God, we just bless you for the wonderful weekend you have granted unto us. Take all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We are here again this week. We are asking of God your help and that which we do this morning. Thank you, Father God, because we receive by faith. In Jesus' his holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay then, so Luke, the 22nd chapter of the, the book of Luke this morning, and we are going to begin from the very first verse. Now the Feast of the Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought out they might kill him for the fear of the people. And then Satan entered Judah, a son named Iscariot, who was uh, numbered among the twelve. So he went his way and conferred with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him to them. And they were glad and they agreed to give him money. So he promised and sought opportunity to betray him to them in the absence of the multitude. Hallelujah. Now, first of all, let me quickly do a bit of a job on uh, Feast of the Unleavened Bread. Uh, which is called the Passover, you know. Um, it's been used as if we are synonymously here. But really, there are two distinct uh, um, anniversaries or feasts, if you like to call, use their language then. There are actually two distinct things, but it's just that one happens the very next day to the other. Um, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread had happened for seven days where they didn't, they didn't eat leaven and they took out of their houses anything that had to do with leaven. They took it out of their house for seven days. That was what happened. The, the day after the number seven, that's supposed to be day eight. You know, day eight is the day of the Passover. So it's as if it's one feast, but they're really, they're actually two. You know, that's the truth about the matter. But they're so, like, so much like that that they just group it together. They just call it unleavened bread or call it Passover or whatever, but they are just, you know, um, they are like that. All right then. So um, let's go to uh, verse 2 now. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him uh, for the fear of the people. Now, this is interesting. When the Bible says chief priests, it's talking about um, the top, 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 top echelon of their uh, priestly order and the people who are in office, you know, maybe for one year, another one. But the chief ones typically you just rotate it among themselves, actually, because of their years of experience, their age, and at times relationship, you know. And then it says, and the scribes. So there are people who occupy those positions, um, religious positions. And then the scribes were the equivalent of what we call the academics. Okay, um, today they, are, they, they were the people who um, studied deeply, who wrote papers. Okay, that's why they call them scribes. They who wrote papers and, you know, have presented, you know, academic papers, quote unquote, you know. Uh, and so they were like our professors, eggheads, if you like. Okay, so those are the ones. Now, the chief priests and these professors, they sought how they might kill him. Now, it's amazing how uh, people that, that have just described who typically are supposed to be the people who were the most fair, most balanced, most objective people, people who should um, who be able to uh, separate emotions or sentiments from the facts of the case. You know, that's what's supposed to be the, this kind of people, the chief priests and the professors, you know. But you see, at times, fear or um, your own personal ambitions or whatever else might actually make, uh, you know, um, uh, make the person not to be who he ought to be. And we still see it today. Some gratis, some whatever, will make somebody who normally would be objective, you begin to talk in a way that, you know, this guy can, a professor, talk this way. Well, he has his reasons for going that direction. Yeah, it happens. And that was what happened here. They had issues, you know, and these people were actually planning, ho holding meetings together to commit murder. Apart from their being biased, they actually were holding meetings to, to, to murder somebody, you know, and all that. And you ask yourself, was that normal? No, it wasn't normal. It was obviously satanic. It was being, you know, uh, orchestrated by the devil. Um, there's a way greed. There's a way 
ambition that is a way of fear that's the opposite of it of fear can can allow satan to completely overtake somebody and possess that person's mind and make him do what normally he or she would not even get into at all but you see those other things they render a person vulnerable so that the Satan is able to come in and just do all kinds of things in that person's life or in that person's mind. Look at the kind of caliber of people. They were actually holding meetings to commit murder. It's unthinkable. But you see, when Satan is in there, oh, anything can happen. Anything goes. All right. And so, and, but there was a problem. The problem was the people. They wanted to do this. They were planning how to do it, but they had to plan in such a way that the people will not be there because this person was popular. And they feared the people because the people might rise up against them and all that. So in all their planning, the problem was the people. They didn't know how to get around that one, you know, because the people were always flocking around this guy. Okay, so that was a problem. Verse 3. Then Satan entered Judah, son named Iscariot, who was among the twelve, who went his way, conferred with these people, you know, how he would betray him to them without the people. You know, in the absence of the people. Now, Judas was somebody who moved with Jesus, so he knew those times when people were not there. So he now went to those people to offer his services. I will betray him to you at a time when nobody was there. You can just have him and do whatever you want to do, do to him. Now, I want us to see something. The Bible says Satan entered Judas. I just told us that it must have been Satan that will make top um, leaders of religion, uh, Lord Spiritual, <laughs> the way they call them, Lord Spiritual, as well as the professors and the eggheads, be sitting down to plan a murder. It must have been satanic. Now the same Satan now entered into Judas. Now, the Satan plan gave them ideas, but the people they were a problem. Okay, The same Satan now entered into Judas so that Judas could offer them um, how to overcome that problem that was there, existing or extant, in the solution that Satan was offering them. That was a problem. It wasn't perfect. So he had to enter some other person so that that other, you know, uh, imperfect aspect of it will be removed. There, the problem will be removed and they will have a smooth sail. The same Satan. Now we see something here. How Satan can actually orchestrate seemingly unrelated things it will look as if those things are not related yet is the one behind everything working at this one working at this one then bringing them together so that everything will just you know uh, happen the way he dreams it that's it satan can do that and it's something that is important for us to understand when things are happening walk in the spirit so that the spirit of god can tell you don't join them don't do that you, you go this way you do your own this way because he can see everything that satan is planning the way we can see what satan is planning uh god help us in jesus mighty name we tree is ours in the mighty name of jesus so uh uh they were glad and they agreed to give him money of course he must have asked them for money so he began to look for opportunity to betray jesus christ now what we do what do we see in uh, judas here judas has always had an existing problem unattended even though he walked with jesus for three years he had a problem with greed you remember that um John was the only one who was bold enough to call him a thief and that he used to steal money. Well, either the rest did not know or John got to know because of the closeness to Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, this guy was working with Jesus for three years. He had that problem. He had that weakness. He failed to own or to say, I have this problem and I need to do something about it. Now, some of us, we know we have weaknesses there and there. Rather than, you know, attack those weaknesses, do something about those weaknesses, we go on saying things like, a lot of people accept me the way I am. When the way you are is no good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So he never really attended that problem. And at times, or rather many times, we look at a problem as a small problem. Whereas that you are at the, a chain is as strong as its weakest link. So also we are as strong as our unattended problem. When we fail to attend this problem, that is what we do us in on the long run. And that's what Satan saw. Satan saw that this guy had a problem in the area of money, in the area of greed, and that the thing remained there unattended, those, despite moving with Jesus. So, moving with Jesus is not automatic, no. At the end of the day, your own will still matters. What you want to do is still matters. So, Satan, ne sorry, but, but, but uh, what's his name now? Uh, Judas Iscariot, you know, never did anything about that, about that area, despite moving with Jesus Christ. You remember also we used to say here, David was very, very close to God, but in the area of women, 
He never, he never saw that area, and that was what did him in on the long run. Judas was here; his own, his own crypts was money and greed. He never did anything about it, despite moving with Jesus, despite being part of the twelve. That was did it, did him in, and that's it. The weakest any area of your life where you know this matter is there, where well, it's just a small matter. Those small matters are. The they may be what you really, really do need to work on. And as you go to the Lord to ask him to help, the Lord indeed is ready to help. Victory is ours in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for sharing time with us today. We wish you a fantastic work week. And don't forget, help us to share, 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 and comment and engage with us. Give us thumbs up and all that so that YouTube can use all those things to advertise our work. Thank you very much. God bless you.